Hey guys, it's Mike Chen. It seems like every day there is news about something new we might have discovered in space or a SpaceX rocket that did or did not explode or maybe we found another planet we could live on once we use up this one. And speaking of this planet, sometimes it does feel like that mankind and Earth are like this old married couple. You kind of feel like you already know every single thing there is to know about this person. The mystery is gone. There's no romance left. And we're constantly looking for some place better to live. But in reality, there is still quite a lot of mystery left. As we take a look at some basic things about our planet, we still don't understand. Number one, unexplored caves. I always talk about on this channel how over 95% of our oceans remain unexplored, but did you know that there are literally thousands of caves that no one, well, at least no one we know of, has ever set foot in? National Geographic estimates the number of undiscovered caves at 90% of the planet's total. Even in well-explored regions like the US, only about 50% of caves have ever been discovered. Number two, unknown minerals. We know of around 5,000 minerals on Earth, which is a pretty good amount. But according to Robert M. Hazen, a mineralologist and astrobiologist at the Carnegie Institute for Science, whose team created a very complex system to calculate the number of unknown minerals currently found on Earth. They found that there are over 1,500 minerals on this planet we still don't know anything about. That may seem like a lot, but keep in mind that many of the Earth's known minerals are pretty rare and are found in only a few select locations on this planet. So think about that and then think about the massive amount of land across the globe that probably still has not been surveyed. So it would make sense that there are still a lot of minerals that we have yet to discover. But check this out. Hazen's model only includes minerals that are possibly accessible. If you add up the ones we may never be able to get to, then the number of unknown minerals may increase exponentially. Number three, we don't really know what's beneath the surface of our planet. I talked about this in another video I did, but when it comes to what we know about our planet, we've literally only just scratched the surface. Think about this. It took the Voyager 1 satellite 26 years to exit our solar system, and it took about the same amount of time for us to dig just 7.5 miles below the Earth's surface. And if you didn't know, that's the Kola Super D a borehole in Russia, which is only 12.3 kilometers, or like I said, 7.5 miles deep. And if you're wondering, that's only 3,992.5 miles short of the Earth's core. Although researchers think they have a pretty good idea what's beneath our feet based on our analysis of things like gravity, fossils, and earthquakes, those are just theories. And until we can actually reach the center of the Earth, we can't be completely sure. For example, this is what we typically think of when we think of what's inside the earth. You've got the crust, mantle, outer core, inner core, but a discovery in 2014 suggested that there is an ocean inside the earth and that ocean might have as much water as all the world's oceans combined. And since typically where there's water, there's life, maybe there's even strange creatures in those waters. Who knows? Number four, undiscovered civilizations. When you think of ancient civilizations, you may think of the Mayans or Egyptians because, well, we have found a a lot of evidence of their existence, but researchers believe there are still hundreds or even thousands of civilizations out there, either covered up by dense vegetation, deserts, or water we had no clue ever existed. That's why every year you'll hear news of archaeologists digging up a new city. So it could mean that legendary cities or civilizations like Atlantis or Adorado could actually exist and we just haven't found it yet. To find these ancient ruins, researchers employ the use of CT scans satellite imagery or Google Maps, ground penetrating radar, and most recently even robotic drones. Number five, unknown species. We know this planet is massive and it contains an astonishing amount of creatures many we have never seen or have documented before. Just to give you guys some perspective, according to her book Wildlife of a Garden, a 30-year study, biologist Jennifer Owen talked about how she began to document the different types of wildlife that she happened to find in her standard family garden in suburban Leicester, England. After 40 years, she had documented over 8,000 species, 20 of which have never been seen before in England, and of those 20, 4 were completely new to 
science. All this from just an ordinary backyard. Now, can you imagine what we could find if we just expanded the search a little? Even after 250 years of official documentation, over 15,000 new species of plants and animals are discovered each year. According to The Guardian, researchers estimate that there are 5 to 10 million species of wildlife in the world, and we have only identified around 1.2 to 1.3 million. So basically, it could be up to 90% of wildlife left in the world that are completely unknown to us. Number six, how gravity works. When we think of gravity, what comes to mind? Newton with an apple, what goes up must come down, Sandra Bullock. Scientists tell us that gravity is the reason that when you jump up, you don't just go floating into space. And the gravity is what keeps the Earth in orbit around the sun, but then they really can't tell us what gravity really is because, well, nobody really knows. There are even mainstream researchers who say that gravity is just an illusion and it really doesn't exist at all. Now here's why gravity is so perplexing. There are four conventionally accepted fundamental forces of nature. Electromagnetic, strong nuclear forces, weak nuclear forces, and, well, gravity. But gravity is supposed to essentially hold the entire universe together and is the weakest by far of all the forces. Like, this time weaker than the third weakest force, weak nuclear. This makes gravity hard to demonstrate in lab experiments, and it also doesn't really fit into Einstein's theory of relativity, which only explains gravity on a large scale. And get this, researchers don't really know what gravity is made of because at the ground level of atoms and molecules, gravity just stops working. Number seven, why ice is slippery. This might sound really simple, but you'd be surprised. I mean, we do know that ice is slippery because there is a very thin layer of liquid water on top of it, even when ice is very, very cold. But here's the thing. How did ice produce that layer of water? For a long time, researchers believed that when we walk or skate on top of ice, the pressure we put on the ice would lower its melting point, and then that would cause the outermost layer to melt. But this was not the case because it was later discovered that the pressure we put on the ice was really not enough to cause this to happen. So why then? Well, we have no idea, but here are some theories. One is that friction was causing the outer layer of the ice to melt, but then that's pretty much debunked because even when someone is standing on the ice and not walking on it, so you're not causing friction, the ice is still slippery. And the other theory is that, well, maybe the water on the outermost layer of ice, it just never freezes. Number eight, how the moon was created. Okay, this one's a bit out of this world, but it's still pretty interesting, so I'm going to include it here. Now, we love talking about the moon. We love looking at it. We love sending people up there and just have them drive around. We also love to debate whether we sent somebody up there at all. But one thing we have no clue of is how the moon was created. We do have some theories though. In the 1800s, Charles Darwin's son, George, suggested that the moon was created because at some point the earth spun so fast, part of our planet spun off into space, and because of earth's gravity, the moon was created. Then there's the theory that the moon was created somewhere in the universe, and when it passed by earth, it was caught in its gravity, and then there's the most popular theory, which says that something massive collided with earth. Earth millions of years ago, and a piece of the planet broke apart and formed the moon. There are some other theories about how the moon was created, which I briefly read about, such as the moon is actually hollow. It was pretty interesting. It has some valid points, so I'll make a video on it, and you can judge for yourself. But you know what? I love doing videos like this because I like the fact that there are still a lot of things in this world that is still a mystery, and that's awesome to me. I like a little mystery in my life. Thanks for watching this video, guys, and let me know in the comments below how you think the moon was created created. See you later.